What's up, guys? You always been asking where's the long format video. So guess what? We're doing it here. This is Fresh Daily Megs, long format, episode one. We're going to try our best to not expose ourselves in this long cut because we usually do a lot of editing. We've been doing the show for like six months, and now we're going to decide to put out a full show. Let's put out the full show. It's full time. How are you doing? Ah, I'm amazing, Day. How are you? Well, we had a week in Vegas, and then yes. you were in, in Miami. Miami for a week. And then before that, you were also somewhere. This type of town, I could spend. Oh, uh, you were in the Bahamas for one day. I'm about to put a tracker on you. Can you? We got it. We have so much to get into. Okay, how was Super Bowl first? How Super Bowl? We were both there. We were both there, but we didn't really get to hang that much. We didn't hang at all, really, besides work, which yeah. is kind of sad. But Super Bowl is that one week where everyone's there. All all your friends are there from the sports world. Every celebrity in the world is there. Every athlete in the world is there. And it's just such an overwhelming period where, like, there's so many plans. It's probably, like, ten parties a night. You have to decide which ones to go to. Ah, hard life. Tough. Tough. Tough life. The God. world's smallest violin <laughs> it's so, playing My Heart Bleeds for You. It's so corny, but you really do have to get your networking in during the day. You cannot sleep. You can't eat. You can only eat Starbucks. That's what everyone does. And then at night, you put on some heels and a dress or a button up for whatever you wear as a male and you know how, you know how much i love to make fun of you for being bougie and being yourself where you're like oh Which I, i'm not bougie, I, had, though. I had 10 parties like oh my life is so hard uh, <laughs> i'm glad you spoke first because it is very much like that where yeah. you're on like on you're on for the entire day 18 hours a day yeah and then you get home at night and you're like oh my god just, just no brain. one like i'm not gonna put on music I'm not I don't want to talk to anyone. I yep. just I just need to zonk out here. Yeah. And it was exhausting and it was like a dream week. It was the, an unbelievable week. It's the, it's specific for people especially that work when they're there. Yeah. If, if some people just come for fun, but if you're working while you're there, that feeling of finally taking off of your lanyard and you get to just lay down and check your phone and realize your phone has been blown up the entire day and you haven't had a chance to call back anybody. Your mom's wondering where you are. You've walked probably 20,000 steps cuz Vegas is so ginormous. It, the va the whole size of Vegas and the hotels and the casino and the convention centers, utterly that in and of itself scares me. What was it like being next to Taylor Swift at the Super Bowl? That was so ah! I, you, you texted me that. I was like, damn, <laughs> girls moving up in the world. I, I actually didn't know I was going to Super Bowl until the day before. I, I had... Even I knew I was going before them. Really? Did yeah. you have tickets or were you going with like friends? Like, how did no, you I, go? I was credentialed. Really? I was. No way. Yeah. How did you get credentialed? This little company called Overtime. Oh, know? my God. You may, you may have heard of it. Is that because you know sports? I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we both know sports, of course. Wait, we both know sports. We totally. both know 100%. sports, of course, of course. I, I love running backs and, and quarterbacks and, and qu football. And tight ends. And tight ends. Yeah, um, and wide receivers. I know all of football. All football. Way more than Alex Day. But it's okay. I went out of You're leisure. You are there for Usher. I chose to go out of leisure. But... Okay, so I didn't know I was going. We were out the night before, um, me You're and a couple of friends. You're talking with a Canadian accent now. Do I really? Out. Out? out. You know what's weird? When I was living in Canada, someone told me I picked up an accent. I was like, do I really sound like I've picked Have up... Have you been hanging with Canadians? I don't... I, I, not that I'm uh, aware of. Uh, oh, okay. All right, More kind of like L.A. Uh, boys. Oh, uh, 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 Oh, oh, oh. Uh, okay, okay. So, <laughs> so you find out the day before the Super Bowl, you're going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and um, uh, it was probably like I couldn't even like contain myself. We were out with like a group of people. I was I couldn't even speak words because like going in a suite, the whole talk of the Super Bowl suites has been a thing for like the weeks. Yeah, it was leading like it. it was like two million dollars or something like yeah. that, right? And if you can like get into a suite, it's it's so it's such a luck like a luxe experience, especially because Super Bowl is the one game. I tell everyone this: it's the one game where you're super lucky to be at, no matter where you're sitting. You have to be thankful you're even in that arena, able to see the game. And totally. To be able to be sitting in a in a suite like that and to be invited by such lovely people as we were, it was just such a crazy experience. Like. There was sushi. Like, I was having sushi at the Super Bowl. I didn't think I was having sushi at the Super you Bowl. You were having sushi I had at shrimp. the Super Bowl. <laughs> I became best friends with Tyga. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah, we're like this now. Are you? You're lying. Well, Rack okay, City. maybe not this part. No, I think you're like this. N yeah. You've become friends with everyone you meet. Yeah, but we, uh, it was a, it was a quick run and gun interview, and then he was like, Okay, that was actually pretty fun. And yeah, because like, people love you. I think every athlete that you interview and like celebrity, oh, they love you. Thank you, Megan. They, you just exude confidence. Yeah, I fake it till I make it. No, but you are confident. Like it's it's the type nah. of like warmth though that like you feel very real. You feel like a real interviewer, someone you could actually talk to. Thank you. I think really 
any celebrity just wants to be talked to like a human. Yeah. Right? Like, and your vibe if, gives like, I didn't get these pre-approved questions. These I, are just I, you don't pre-approve the questions and I'm just going to talk to you the same exact way as if you're in my living room versus there. So I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. You really do. You do a good job. Actually, I saw Alex on the red carpet, which was like a pretty cool moment. We were both having our, we we're both doing our jobs and just kind of like existing, but it was just so cool. Like you did the booth by Brian. I saw that. We should have hit you that were, together. That would have been so cool. We should have hit that together. No, but then people would have been like, ah, uh, when you get in the booth by Brian together. That's, that's a cozy space. That's a cozy it's, space. It's a cozy space. And we have three feet apart from us right now. Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> Can we talk about what happened at NFL Honors? <laughs> wait, this was so funny. How, do you want to start off? Do you want to tell it from your side? <laughs> okay, I'd be glad to say it from my side. Because I was just work, I was just existing. You I, were, <laughs> I was at NFL Honors uh, with a female, a lady, a woman, a very nice woman. And we were kind of moving around, walking around together. It was like a cocktail hour before the honor started. So everyone was just kind of in one big room. And I run into you, and we were together while we were both working during the red carpet. (laughs) So we'd already talked, but you didn't say hi to me or anything. You just gave me the weirdest side (laughs) eye, like like one of these. (sighs) And, And the girl goes, who is that? I'm like... That was my co-host. She's just being real weird and awkward. I'm so, I'm sorry about her. I love what, being what, weird. What was that reaction about? You did, you wouldn't come up and say hi. You're just <laughs> spying from afar. So in in I'm gonna tell my side now. I was working. I had to go backstage and wait backstage because the honors was starting. I had to set up. I had to I had to prepare for what I was about to do, which was like. I was a station after the winners walked off stage. I was backstage, and they had to go through the labyrinth. Is that how you say it? Yeah. The labyrinth, and I was, I was the final boss. So I had to go back there ASAP Rocky and get ready. And um, as I'm walking back there, I'm being guided by the people that I was, I was working with there. Um, I was with Invisalign. And so we were walking through, and all, I just see Alex in passing, in passing. And there was a moment that I could have stopped and said hi, but it was just so crazy in there. But, of course, the one second I see Alex, he's, of course, not with his coworkers. He's just with this beautiful girl that he found, and he is I holding hands. I didn't find her. We weren't holding hands. In my brain, you guys are holding hands. Were you not? Uh, Maybe uh, a little guiding action. Guy, some guiding action. Some, some guiding yeah, through some, the crowd. Some, some arm. I think know. there was some arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very crazy yeah. crowd. So yeah. I just gave him a look. Which, because, you know, we talk about dating a lot, and we talk about how Alex is just so good at meeting girls in the wild. It was just so <laughs> funny that, of course, at the NFL Honors, when we're, like, just kind of going through cocktail hour in passing, I see him already in the wild with a mate. So <laughs> it's just funny to me that you picked up and you're rising. Spotted. So quickly. Spotted The event in the had wild. just started 10 minutes Spot- ago, too. Cocktail hour was, like, 10 minutes in, maybe five, and he already had some. I didn't, I look, I, uh... What are you going to do? But it, well, you, you, you were at the NFL Honors. You got to watch from front stage. You actually yeah. got to see the whole thing. You were, you were texting me from backstage. I was backstage. How the hell do you end up backstage? Like, <laughs> I'm, what? I'm a, no. I feel lucky that I get to go to the things I get to go to. And then you somehow one-up me on those same exact things. <laughs> we'll be at the same thing, and you just had a wildly different experience. Oh, police. Oh, police. I was, I was working. I was doing my interviews. I got to interview Lamar Jackson, which is pretty cool. I trust. saw Miles Garrett again. Uh, Will trust. Anderson. Yeah. You don't get the trust. No. You know, like Lamar? Yeah. He's like, big trust. Yeah. Woo-woo. That's exactly you. That's the <laughs> camera. You big trust. Woo-woo. Yeah, you have to sit with that See tonight. you at the bank. Um, how was it like seeing Alex Earl walk out on stage? Because that was a big shocker for me. When I was watching the TV, I didn't think she was going to present. You were, star- you were starstruck by Alex Earl? Yeah. Oh, I went up to her on the red carpet. <laughs> And what'd you say? I said, hi, Alex. You look, I probably sounded like a me. She probably thought I was like some crazy girl. I hope girl. you didn't just sound like that. She, I actually Did sounded you sound like, like that? this. I was like, hi, oh, no. you look so beautiful. Oh, it's no. so nice to meet you. My name is Megan. Hi, Alex. And then I awkwardly, really quickly, I didn't want to bother them. And I was like, hi, Braxton. My name is Megan. Nice to meet you. Like, I looked like a psychopath. And I was like, do you guys want to come answer some questions? But they were like running through. Yeah, I, I asked them if they also want to. I, I've known Braxton for a couple years. I had never met Alex before. It was good to see him. They didn't weren't really doing that many interviews or anything, but it was cool. Yeah, it was I think cool. they were focusing cool more on photos, I believe, is yeah. what they said. Booth by Brian. I wanted to definitely they, – they were in the booth by Brian. I saw that. I, I wanted to get her in some interview questions because that is – it was just so cool to see her in person, seeing all the – are you looking up Alex Roll right now? No. Keep talking. You're good. Mm-hmm. I, I was I, 
Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm, I'm, joking. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up what's next. Um, No, but that was like super cool. The game was amazing. I was so lucky to have the seats that I had. Thank you to the people that hosted us. And, and it was just amazing. Overtime had a great setup with the podcast there. Um, and it, this it is like your fun. acceptance speech right now. This is my acceptance. Oh my God, this really yeah. is. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I really like to accept this award. Who's that first name that you thanked? You killed it. Oh, wait. Who did I? What? I don't know. Uh, huh? Who, me? I don't remember. You. Yes. You hosted Battle of the Paddles. I did. I did. How's that? Okay, so Battle of the Paddles, it was eight NFL stars competing in a table tennis ping pong Emphasis tournament. on stars. Like, these are like the big dogs. Yeah, it was it was cool. Like, Saquon, Trevor Lawrence. Like, Trevor Lawrence, like, shocked me when he walked in the room. I was like... Yeah, I mean, that's... We've been watching him for forever. Like, yeah. high school. Uh, DeAndre Swift. Did I say Will Levis? Oh, uh, no. Um... Jamal Williams, everyone. Dustin Hopkins, the kicker. Fletcher Cox was there. Like, everyone was there. It was crazy. Wait, Fletcher Cox was there? Uh, yeah. He hopped in on one I of the interviews I was doing. I was, so I was calling the event. It was with, with Procter & Gamble. Yeah. So I was a little locked in with that. Um, I called it with Kieran yeah. and Tom and Kay Adams. You killed it. So thank you. You guys actually all killed it. it. I was watching the live broadcast from the dressing well, room. It was weird. It's like, what do you, like, t- you're talking about ping pong. Yeah. Like, I, I, we're talking about ping pong here. I like, how say, do you make yeah. ping pong fun? Like, I mean, I wasn't, dude, come on. Commentating is like the hardest job, and there's a reason they chose you for it. Like, you're able to make ping pong sound fun. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, at first, I was like, am I just going to call every single time one of them hits it? But then there was going way too quick. I, I changed it up from there. Yeah. But you should go watch it if you haven't. It's on the Overtime Season uh, YouTube channel. That was it was fun. good vibes. It was good, good vibes. It was fun working with Kay Adams. Yeah, Her and I amazing. are best friends now. Um, she's yeah. pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, woman in sports, man. Come on. Shout out women in sports. So I would say, give me that a 10, Super Bowl week. Not even joking. I, <laughs> nine? Nine and a half? I'm only because I don't give out 10s? Mm-hmm. That's pretty much a 10. It was like a dream week for me. I'm gonna and give especially because like I love, you know, high school sports are great. I love other professional sports, but like NFL is king. NFL's NFL, king. NFL For you especially is my shit. Too. Yeah, absolutely. That's your that's this is that was your playing field. That was your totally. oyster, and you were you were the pearl in the oyster. I was the pearl. I'm being nice today. Oh my god! <laughs> I was gonna say why are you bu- you're buttering me up for a reason. I'm wondering how you're gonna break me down. Uh, because we're gonna get into some interesting topics. I like our little recaps. The recaps are fun because we usually do this before we start filming, and then we don't film yeah. it. Yeah. This is my first like Super Bowl. This is my first game ever that I actually bet like. Real money Who'd on. Who'd you bet on? Um, you bet on the Niners. Yeah. Cups of the roses. You should have asked me. I Who, should have asked who's you before the bigger, I dropped a Louis Vuitton bag on the stupid Super Bowl. Who's the bigger NFL fan? The person you got advice from or me? You. You're a Jets fan. Well, how could you know anything about <laughs> yeah. it? I mean, come on. The Jets. If the Jets were in the Super Bowl, that'd be an easy question. But no, I was like, oh, 49ers. No, the way I thought about Anna it. Anna going to save us. And, but then Fry. the script. The script was scripting. It, and Taylor Swift, was the entire game just looked way too happy the entire game. I was like, oh, they already know they're going to win. But the thing is, if you bet against Patrick Mahomes and then Patrick Mahomes wins, you're like, I'm stupid. Yeah. Because everyone knew he was going to win. I so I didn't want to feel stupid. I mean, dude has Me three personally. Super Bowl rings. Me personally, I was not in the mood Sanities. to feel stupid. I felt stupid, and I am now being a little frugal for the next week because I still am just so mad that I bet money. Money that I just, like, I'm, it just doesn't feel good. It did not feel good, and I'm never Money that you again. have, but money that doesn't feel good to lose. No, of course it doesn't feel that's good. That's why it's called gambling. Gambling. That's why it's called gambling. I hate gambling. All right, can I ask you some relationship questions? I love gambling. Questions? I'm lying, but, like, whatever. What? Can I ask you some relationship questions? Valentine's Day was recently. So we have some good, uh, we have some good stories about that, huh? Because I just know you did something amazing on Valentine's Day. Uh, m- okay, so. Did you? I ha- I had the least special Valentine's Day in the world. I didn't do anything special, but my big takeaway from Valentine's Day is that uh, this girl who I've uh, who I've I've seen for a little bit the last couple weeks, whatever, and she sent me the video of us talking about what to do on Valentine's Day. And said, so what are we doing on Valentine's Day? I love it. And now I'm d- I'm second guessing everything I think before talking right now. You know what I love about that is that she had the confidence to send you that being like, hey, listen to your own word, which is funny because the same thing has happened to me. Uh, like they like my. You're getting called out for these clips now. I've been getting called out for my clips. Oh, also, especially for the crazy stuff I say. 
Right, but like, no, it's but it's actually not the crazy stuff. It's like the oh, that's how you feel. Yeah, and it's like oh, so I had to so, be like, no, so what I'm are we, so what are we doing then? I had to be honest. I'm like, no, when I'm on here, I'm sometimes I'm most of the time just being super sarcastic. I, I had to. Break oh, it down I doubled a down. Bit. I doubled down on it. <laughs> I was like, never said anything I regret. Well, after some uh, after you know, I've been had some clips pointed out to me. I was like. I might regret a little bit of those now. <laughs> right, exactly. It's only when someone, like, realizes, like, it's only when someone takes this clip super seriously that you're like, oh, like, right. I'm just joking. Right. But um, so you saying to do something on Valentine's Day and then you not doing anything, how does that, how does that really, I mean, are you guys still talking? Uh, sure. Loosely. Loosely. Mm. That was a tough one to come back from. Yeah. Yeah. How many flowers did you wake up to on Valentine's Day? You sent me that picture <laughs> with a force. I didn't wake up to flowers. I had to fly, and they were in the hotel room. <laughs> uh, did you pay for those flights? No. Oh. I, no. Okay, I'm were, with you. I'm no, the flying was part of the Valentine's Day. I had a Valentine's Day surprise. Yeah, like yeah a you really did. You did. Big one. Uh, did you leave the country I saw? I did. <laughs> Where'd you go? I went to the Bahamas for the day. <laughs> for the day? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how'd you get there with who and where'd you stay? With who? Not important. Not important. Only important Got it. to me. Yep. Um, how'd I get there? A little hop, little, little, little airplane. A little, how <laughs> small was this airplane? I counted. It was about like seven seats. How many of those seats were filled? Just the two of us. So <laughs> hypothetically speaking, <laughs> this was a PJ. It was, it was a PJ. A PJ for V-Day. The, the <laughs> The best part, though, was that I didn't know what was happening until I pulled up, and we pulled up to the airport, and I was like, where are we going when for one up? day? I was like, for the day, where are we flying to? And he was like, Bahamas. And I was like, I, I didn't know the Bahamas was so close to Miami. <laughs> I was like... Oh, no, it's, it is, it's really close. I was like, how long is that flight? And he was like, 30 minutes. I was like, oh, okay, let's go. And it was so fun. There's chocolates on the plane, and it was just a lot of fun. So... <laughs> what did you go to like a resort or you get where'd you go uh we went to the four seasons um Damn. and then we just had a we had a little day we went to dinner we did some beach walking um but it was good it, it that's was like <laughs> the most romantic valentine's day of all time you went on a private jet to the bahamas to the four seasons Woo-wee! Woo-wee! <laughs> the thing is though is that I, Damn. I I didn't even Damn. expect anything that big because, you know, I I'm such a happy girl with like any anything. Like you could just get me flowers from CVS. You like I always need, said. You just need some like homemade pasta. The flowers from Publix were fine. But like to be surprised genuinely, I was like super grateful and I kept saying how grateful I was and how excited. Hopefully I you was. didn't say it too many times. I said it quite a few times. Yeah. I, I I like to exude gratefulness because that just shows you're like there. 100%. You're there for the right reasons, and you're there because you actually genuinely care about the person. But also, I we're think just you friends, should, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I think it, you should always exude gratefulness in any part of your life. At what point do you know you're out of the honeymoon phase? <laughs> Never. I'm always in the honeymoon phase. Mm, mm-hmm. That's kind of a red flag a little bit. Really? I think so. I'm just way too happy to be no, here. No, no. You, you <laughs> got you, you to gotta have some, like, you know, what's, like, a normal Tuesday of two people together, like? Uh, after how many months, though? Like, a specific amount of time. I, I would say about four months of honeymoon. That might be a little I too I was long. actually expecting you to say a lot longer than that. Mm, maybe, like, six. My it, last relationship, honeymoon phase was over, like, two months in. And I was like, oh, when's it going to come back? It never came back. It was terrible. But this one, I think if you genuinely make every day a little interesting, like, the honeymoon phase never ends. Right, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be like a, a hard drop off. Like, oh, and I've looked, had a hard looked, drop it off. It looks like we're doing it the boring way now. I've had a hard drop off, and it did not feel great. All right, I'll say like <laughs> I'll say three. I'll say three or four months. Really? I'll say three or four months. And then, then you have to appreciate the simple days. You have to appreciate like. Wait, you're when not you appreciating go- the simple. I'm just. Wrestling. What's your one tip for long distance relationships? Keep it spicy. Keep it. <laughs> Look, you're laughing. I'm completely, completely with you. Completely with you. I mean, it's um to be completely blatant. It, it, that's I think it's completely normal to to keep things spicy, and we're so blessed to have technology, and we are also super um not so blessed to have technology. So maybe 
maybe just like stick to like phone calls every day and night. Maybe for a few hours at night. You're a, you're a FaceTime person. Maybe a little bit you're of FaceTime. You're a FaceTime person. Yeah. How often do you need to see someone to like make it worth it? I would say like at least once or twice a month. That's that's kind of what I was thinking too. Like, but what? like and like for like a week at a time. A week at a time. Yeah. How, How long distance are we talking? What do you consider long distance? If it's a less flight. than a, if it any flight. Mm. See, like I don't consider Miami that much of long distance, honestly, because it's such a quick flight. It's two hours. Uh, Miami is long distance. If you're dating, if you're in New York and you're dating someone in Miami, it is long distance. If. If the flight's less than three hours and I can get there because there's multiple flights a day, to me, it's not long distance. If, if it's I meet, a five-hour flight. If I meet a girl who lives in Brooklyn, I'm saying <laughs> it's long distance. You don't think it's long distance no. from New York to Miami? If there's no time change and if it's less than three hours and if there's multiple flights a day, I don't consider it long distance. Okay, you'll just go to Greater Lanes. No joke. If a girl said she lived in the Upper West Side, I, I wouldn't do it. Really? I wouldn't do it. Straight up. You're out? I'm out. So you only date within a three mile radius. Actually, I'm lying. This is New York City. A like, zero point five mile radius. Like a like a, like a, <laughs> a walking distance. <laughs> like, if like, I can like, get like, there, like like a, like a subway radius. Like about like five stops. Max. Like I'm, I'm and not, no transfers. I'm going on uh, uh, max two two subways. Really? Yeah. I mean, it takes me max two subways to get to overtime, and like that feels long distance for me. But that's yeah. like that's what you know subway. I, I wouldn't if I have to subway to you. Maybe I'm not gonna date you if i have to fly to you i'll do it <laughs> i'm not i'm not risking my life on the subway every time i'll risk that, my life on that, the airplane that's fair you don't hear you don't hear about <laughs> you don't hear about bad things happening at laguardia you hear about bad things happening on the six train I, I mean what if she's more than a 30 dollar uber yeah what if say you can't subway are you spending the money to uber every time <sighs> this is tough mm-hmm. this is tough we have to consider these things uh i, I kind of like yeah. i kind of like biking Call me crazy. Well, depending on what time. If it's during the day, I'll bike. If it's at night, of course. You're gonna show bike. up all sweaty, wetty. Oh, for a date? Yeah. No, I did that once in the fall, and my phone fell out of my pocket. That story and I was lost funny. My phone, and I showed up to this date, the most rattled <laughs> human being in the world. Yeah. Hey, sorry, I just lost my phone. She was a I real one in, too. I walked in sweaty. I walked in like, oh my god, can I borrow your phone? It was just, it was bad. Wait, that girl was a real one. I love that story. It was bad. It was bad. We gotta it like repost bad. it, honestly. It was so good. Let's like insert it or something. We gotta find that clip. It was so good. Which one? The clip of you telling that story. I think you told it. D- I may have only told that story off, off camera. Off camera. Ah. Off camera. Oh wow. And then I was about to go meet the guy in a parking garage, and then I talked some. You almost fell for the classic stolen phone scam, where they're like, "Oh, we'll come give it to you here," and it's like it's like midnight in the middle That's of like. That's literally what happened. In the middle of like Bayside, you're like, ah, I'm not. Going yeah, no, there. I, I don't need to meet you in a parking garage at at one in the morning in the East Village. Yeah. Pass. Yeah. Just use her phone. Just marry her instead and then just have her live with you and you can use her phone forever. She can buy you a phone. It didn't work out that way. Yeah. Do you talk to that girl still? No, I don't. That's. If I helped a man find his phone. I know. And took I him in like a lost puppy. That. I felt really bad Didn't about she take that. you in like a lost puppy? She did. I felt really bad about that. Did I you lose your, your house keys? No, just my phone. Oh, but you still. But I felt bad because she, mm. she was extremely kind and, and helpful with that and. What a good soul. Tough. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, long distance. Okay, so let's say yes or no, long distance. I've never been in a long distance relationship, so I'm not really want to talk other than what? my first semester of college, which is why it only lasted for one semester because I don't like long distance. But I will say people who have got friends in other cities and mm-hmm. yeah, I would friends. say I would say you got you got to see. At least once a month. I don't know. The, the social media has opened the dating door to the entire That's world point. and flights. So I think long distance is actually the norm nowadays. It's actually weird. No, if, I, if you meet no. someone in your hometown to me, I'm like, that's weird. That's not the norm. It feels like it. If someone says they're doing long distance, you're like, oh, of course. I think everyone I know, almost everyone I know is doing long distance relationship. And to me, if I'm you're just dating like, someone yeah, in the I same city, you're like, oh my God, that's so old fashioned. I literally do think that. I'm like, oh my God, that's so sweet. You guys can see each other every day. Like, that's so cool. Yeah. I love it. See, the thing is then that would be, that's the same reason that you need to see someone for a week straight. Yeah. If it's long distance. New York City is just too small of a world to date here. Everyone dates everybody. Everyone dates everybody? Mm-hmm. See, that's one of those things that if I say it, you're like, 
See, that's the reason because you don't. Uh, and then you say, yeah. and you're like, yep. 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 Everyone, that's right. Everyone dates everyone. So am I, am I saying something that you would say? Completely. Oh, I'm learning from yeah. you. There you go. Yeah, that's We're too far away. I don't want to, I don't want to lean. Okay. I don't want to lean too much. Is springtime the best time of year to start a relationship? Awful time. I am completely with you. Because, yeah. so, well, we're right now in winter. Yeah. So and summer's not around the corner. But spring, you don't want to start a relationship in May. No, that feels right? gross. That feels weird. Right? That, that, it's it more doesn't fun. feel natural. I'm always of the belief that, like, I don't know, maybe it's because it's cold in New York and you're just inside more. But, like, yeah. it's just more fun being in a relationship in the winter than being single. That's and right. it's more fun being single in the summer than being in a relationship. I don't know. I'd rather, and I've experienced both in both seasons. I don't know. I, I, all I know is the flowers are blooming, but my heart's not. I do not want to start dating you in <laughs> April. That feels like the worst month to start dating. March? Don't even get me started. What's the best month? March is the worst month in the world. March and April? I hate March and April. I literally, when I was growing up in school, I always thought to myself how much I despised March and what? April. It's always cold. It's always rainy. It's always icky. It's always slushy. It's disgusting. This is just specific. Wait, what's the best month then? October. Mm. My birth. Mm. Maybe even September. Mm. Okay, so not so. Does that mean if you're on the fence in the spring, you're like you're seesawing the other way? I think spring is breakup season. Everyone breaks up in the spring. Everybody breaks up in the spring. There's something in the water, and I don't drink the water for that reason. You don't. Yep. Uh, and are you in a relationship right now? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> All flags are white flags until you determine a color. Like if she doesn't wear socks. Say, say, say that again. All flags are white flags until you determine a color. Like if she wears, if she doesn't wear socks inside, like if she's going bare toes on the hardwood floor, like you determine is that green or red or beige or pirate flag. So that just means like you can feel a certain way about anything you want to. Yeah. I, there, I, I, don't, I don't believe in green flags. I actually think everything's a flag until you determine what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how many different flags are there? There's like four. There's uh, white there? is neutral. Beige is No, like white, white means you're giving up. White, if, you, if you're waving oh the yeah, white surrender. flag, you're like, I'm out of this. You're surrender. Beige is like, it's not bad. It's not good. It's just like, that's their neutral. personality. It's very neutral. Okay. Um, red is bad. Green is like extra good. Like, oh, wow. Like, I love this man. Um, and then there's pirate flag. It's a skull and crossbones. And, uh, and what's that? Is that it's like uh, you put on an eye patch and... You wear a hook? I haven't determined exactly what it is yet. I just look at some of the things that boys do, and it just reminds me of, like, an animal. And I'm just like, yeah, that's your pirate flag. That's, like, that's like the primal flag. Yes. That's the word I was looking for. Like, a very primal Pirate, male trait. primal. Like, that's your pirate flag that you have there. Okay, so what would be an example of a pirate flag? Like, when boys, like, arm wrestle each other. <laughs> Or, like, That's start a good just example. fighting each other out That's of a good example. When guys take their shirts off for no reason. Like, when guys also just good example. start ripping. Yeah, like, that's pirate flags. Okay, I, th I think when girls start talking about their, their like, beauty cosmetic products, mm -hmm. pirate flag. Really? Pirate flag. No, you have to pick your own flag. Pirate flag. What about if they're doing a get ready with me TikTok? Oh, that's pirate a, that's flag. pirate flag. Pirate flag. If he if he can <laughs> stick handle a hockey puck, Canadian flag. And okay. that's my favorite. <laughs> if she can drive sti <laughs> stick shift on a car, green flag. Green flag. Green flag. <laughs> what other flags are there? <laughs> that, that's <laughs> it. You're, like, you're 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 done. If he says his O's like ooh, like a Canadian, Canadian flag. You're getting awfully specific with these. I love Canadian flags. Awfully specific. What do you do if your significant other forgets your birthday? I've done this before. I've done this before, too. It's probably the most gut-wrenching feeling. I think you just to have to own it. You do have to own I it. I think you just have to own it. Can you it. tell us the story of what happened? It wasn't, uh, mm. it wasn't a long-term relationship. It was early, and we weren't even officially dating. But she did tell me, she's like, oh, my birthday is in three weeks. And then like, That's not gonna be two weeks later, I forgot. Mm -hmm. So not really. I'm kind of off the hook, but I owned it. I was like, yeah, I forgot. Forgetting is such I'm like sorry. a, it's such an honest mistake sometimes. Like yeah. you really just don't know what day it is. You really don't know what month it is. I don't even know what day of the week it is right now. It's sometimes just an honest mistake. It does show though, you don't care that much. You you can, but there's like a level, like you got to be honest. It's a, it's a S-H-I-T-E move. Kind of. It's a terrible move. I think we're putting a little too much stock in it. I don't know. When and I, was, I think uh, I think they'll respect you more for just owning it. I when I was sixteen, 
I was talking to a boy. I had my first love. And <laughs> we were <laughs> driving. <laughs> Wait, this is actually, this is actually, we're, I was so young, but like I was, I got in the car. He picked me up for school and we drove to school together. And I started crying in the car because I didn't have makeup on because my mascara, I think I like dropped it or in the toilet or something. And I, I didn't have any mascara on that morning. So I was crying saying he needs to drive me to a CVS right now for mascara. And he just in silence drove me to the CVS. I ran in crying still, grabbed the mascara. I was a terrible 16 year old. And then I came out and I was so happy. And I was like, oh, this day turned around so well. And then oh I look, I, then I, I have a moment. Nightmare, in the car. nightmare, <laughs> nightmare, nightmare. <laughs> then I'm like, why are you being so quiet? And he looks at me and he goes, it's my birthday today. <laughs> Tough. I was 16. You got to own it. No. <laughs> you so have bad. to own I feel it. So bad. And you were the one having the bad day. <laughs> Me crying about mascara made it even worse. Like, Did I was you then start crying about the fact that you forgot his birthday? A hundred percent. I was like, I'm such a bad person. But when you're, come on, I was a kid. I was a kid. Like, I, that's, I would never do that as an adult. I make people feel special on their birthdays as an adult. But I think about that, and I just cringe at the human I was. It was bad. How old were you? How old was I what? When you forgot a birthday. Oh, this was not too long ago. <laughs> I'll be, but it wasn't anything Aww. as serious as that. Well, I was 16. How serious can you like? Yeah, but you sound like you were with him for longer. <laughs> this is like this is like this Ugh. is like first month stuff. I don't think relationships count uh, before 21 years old. How about you? <laughs> That's a wild statement. I completely disagree with you. Unless you've dated from like 18 to 25, sure. No, but no, if no, you no, started no. dating someone before 21 and ended it at 21, then it doesn't count. No, no, no. Megan, nope. Megan, listen to me. Nope. Listen to me. Anytime you're with someone. You learn something. You learn something here. You learn something here. You learn something about yourself here. Maybe you learn something that you didn't like about yourself. You just, you just collect this data. I don't know. You know, you collect this data. No. And even if you're 19 years old, you still remember those. Not just like the memories or whatever, but like you still, you learn something, you know? I learned nothing. The person I was at 19, I think was literally a 12-year-old child. Like I view myself at 19 as like I'm, I was an infant. And now, sure. now that my frontal cortex is starting to, like, really click into place, I can't believe I even was in relationships before 21. I was such a child, like, outwardly, like, maturity-wise. I can't even believe I dated before 21. And after 21 is when, like, Didn't I Didn't you like, have a high school boyfriend? Yeah. That, like, why, why do you have boyfriends at 17? You're no, a baby. But I, You're a I'll child. even look back because I, I had a girlfriend for all of high school. Three and a half years. And it wasn't like I just throw it out the window because I was a kid. Like, it counts for something. It counts for something, but then But again, also, if you're not in one before then, I also say that doesn't really count for anything either. Why does the guy always have to ask to be in a relationship? Why not the girlfriend? First of all, I think it can technically go either way. No. I'm with you. But, like, I feel like I've also heard the other side. But I do think uh, there's a lot of times where maybe – the guy is on the fence more than the girl. Yeah. So it's the guy saying he wants to be on this side of the fence. Like, I feel like girls are more likely to say yes than guys. True? Girls will say yes every time you ask them out. I don't think I've ever met a girl. That's my point. That says no. That's my point. Yeah. So sh since the girls are already on one side, it's the guy showing that he is also joining her on that side. And that I know, mm -hmm. I know there's going to be a lot of people mm -hmm. who are going to be like, that's a crazy way of thinking. But I think... That's, that's a just, normal way. That's just more of like a majority. That's not in every case, but that's like more of a majority case. If I said that I asked the person I'm talking to to be my boyfriend and I said that out to the world, people will tell me to post it on reels and that's how you know it's a bad idea. <laughs> you would get insecure about it. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. If I want someone to cross the fence, they better build the door with hinges that it can be opened and closed. I want you to build a door and then walk through the door and be on my side. You, you're you signing – it takes two parties to sign a contract. And when there's already one signature down there, you know. Yeah. I don't know. You didn't get what I was saying. No, I don't. Uh, Bottom line, girl cannot ask. If a girl asked you to be her boyfriend, you how would you feel about that? It wouldn't work. Uh, sounds great to me. Uh, no. Are you serious? No, 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 no. I, uh, <clears throat> I would appreciate their initiative. But I would also then get very freaked out. Yeah, freaked out. And I don't think she would end up liking that decision either. What I have heard, what I have heard, because uh, I knew a couple where she was waiting for him to propose, mm -hmm. and he wasn't proposing. And she said, 
You either have to propose to me by the end of the year or else I'm proposing to you. Oh, you told me that. What happened with that? I don't know how it ended up going because oh, all, well, I, all I heard was out. the ultimatum and then I didn't hear the... Once you give an ultimatum, the relationship's over. Mm. Like if that person's not going to do what will be best for both of you regardless just to keep you around, then yeah, your relationship's over if you have to give an ultimatum. It's I true. Don't... Right, because there should there should be a certain level of... Want. We're, we're all pulling the same rope here. We're all pulling the same rope. Yeah. And if you're not hauling, if you're not hauling, um, donkey's booty, then you know Sorry, it's over. Time? I can't. I can't cuss. Cussing is so bad, and I'm trying to use different words. Hauling of donkey's booty. Because there's a cuss that relates to that. Got it. No, but relationships only work because the guy's more obsessed than the girl. So if a guy gets asked by the girl, he clearly doesn't like her, and it's not going to work. And also, if a girl proposes to a guy, it's not going to work. And, and, and if he, if you have to give a guy an ultimatum, he's just going to walk away. When guys are given a tough decision, their first instinct is just to wipe it off their plate. That is true. Guys don't know how that to, is like, true. They don't have emotions tied to stuff. No, they guys do have do emotions tied, but but we don't we don't like the uh, the arrow being pointed at us. Guys, you know, that's... guys like logic. They like logic. Yeah, if it's just me out, they're gonna cut it out. They don't care about their emotions. They could no, love you. No, no. Well, you keep like, saying don't care about the emotions. I disagree with you on that. Well, you're an emotional person. I think. Yeah, I'm an emotional you're a person. A little bit. Yeah. Totally. Should the, you keep maintaining a relationship with someone even if you know you really can't be in a relationship right now? Yes. You just shouldn't cross the line. But yeah. Well, you could talk to someone, be friends with someone. You don't don't cross the line. Don't let it be known. I think it could be like a little unspoken thing. But if you're just normal, and you're just friendly, no, you disagree. No. What you're te- you're telling me there aren't people that you just keep in touch with because you don't say, hey, maybe one day. Yeah, but I'm not actively like that close to them. I'm not right. close. No, there there's levels to it. There's this is levels a really confusing question. No, it's like. If you know someone is off limits, but you still enjoy talking to them, do you just drop it all together or do you continue talking to them? I think you just stay friends and then just agree right person, wrong time. That's keep, what keep I did. Keep them on a good bridge. Don't burn a bridge. That's don't what I Don't burn a did. bridge just because you don't have time. No, I, I completely agree with Yeah. You. But leave the door unlocked. Totally. But, but let them then go there's also the a door. certain point where you got to mm-hmm. uh, – you can't cross that line. I just thought of something. Completely unrelated. Can Tell I ask me. you? Tell me. This is going to be really bad. Okay. I have guy friends that have come to me and admitted that they've cheated on their long distance girlfriend. Or not, or long distance, their long term girlfriend. Like, I've had two guy friends do this to me within the last two years. Like, they've admitted to me that, like, I did something bad and I already know. And they say, they tell me they cheated. And then they ask me for advice. And I tell them, you obviously have to tell the girlfriend. Why do guys just think, I'm better off not telling her. Why do w- and take it to the grave? Why do you think guys do that? Well, because you don't want to hurt someone. Yeah, but why is it okay for guys to make a mistake and then just kick it to the corner? But if a girl makes a mistake, it's all hell breaks loose. Um, I think you a shouldn't cheat. If you do cheat, you should tell them. But I also do understand the side of like two wrongs don't make a right, where it's like then you're you're hurting someone twice. Right? Yeah. The thing is, though, if you – it just shows – like, there's no morality of character if you fully cheat and then just agree to tell somebody but then say, you know what? I told somebody, not the person I cheated on, though. I'm going to brush it off. And I've been wondering. It's been eating me alive. I'm like, why is that okay? Do I have to now tell the girl? No, I'm not doing that. Step one is don't cheat. Step one is don't cheat. But but why do – Ah! I step two though, I think you should tell, but also I kind of get it from the other side too. I kind of do, and and in the sense of that's not what I would do, but I do think if someone was like this would hurt them much more if they knew and they could just continue on with their life, I I do kind of get that also. They stay with the girlfriend. I, I think it's like a two year relationship. No, that. They can't do that. You can't just can't move on and act like you didn't just have a blip in your timeline. Can't do that. But guys do. And this is what stresses can't me out that. is that a guy will love his girlfriend. And I know. And then I, I hear that he's like, yeah, I, I messed up. What and about, they know it's a mistake, but they're like, we'll do it again. Okay. What about what about if, if, uh, if someone cheats, they don't tell, and they break up? I guess it's fine because you know what? You, you, ex- 
it's not fine, but is that at least you broke up because then you're not continuing something because then she's going to think she right. has this amazing, loyal, loving relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In reality, you way, messed up go- big by the- time. By the way, this goes completely the other way, too. Oh, 100%. You, if you're not going to tell your significant other that you made a mistake, you at least got to leave them and, and do them a favor. And it's going to suck because you're not going to give them closure. If you're not going to tell someone you cheated and not give them the closure – the best you can do is take your sorry self out of there and go ruin someone else's life. You already. Woo! I mean, let's be real. Let's I'm be honest. You. I'm it's, with you. No, but I've been thinking about that lately because I'm like, I can't believe guys can just move on and and be like, yeah, I messed up. And why? Is that, why am I holding the the trauma, the guilt? I can't. Not trauma. But like, I I've had two guys tell me that in the last two years, and I and you go am tell in the, shock. Would you go tell their ex? No, I, like, I don't even have, like, contact with the girls. Like, Are you one of those? I also, that, like. That, that you would hit up the But also, like, is it your place if you know someone's cheating? For me, a random person to tell this random girl that your boyfriend cheated on you. Yes. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. It is. But then, like. I can't say I've ever done that. That's, where that's, I've, I've, I've ever butted into someone's business. I'm going to get so much hate for this, but, like, I've been thinking about it lately, and I'm like, but, like, that's not my job. You need to tell your girlfriend you Actually, up. I'm going to change my mind. Can I change my answer? Yes. No, you mind your own business. Thank you. Because I, I, if it was me and I had that information, <sighs> I think I'm still holding on to that information. I'm not getting in someone else's business. I mean, cheating on someone and knowing about it, or having your friend cheat on someone and then knowing about it, like, you're just holding an un- just Dis- like a disgusting amount of guilt. Yeah. Because you're like, there, your friend is continuing to be a bad person, technically. And all my, fr- I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. We're like dragging this on too long. But like, do I tell the girlfriend? I think you don't tell the girlfriend. I would want someone to tell me. That's the oh, they, Wait, they're still together? Yep. Yeah, you tell the girl. Well, is this recent? Yeah. Uh, so he recently, he recently. Cheated or no, on her. he cheated on her when they were on like a break. Maybe I leave breadcrumbs. Like I don't know the. <sighs> yeah, like wasn't uh wasn't October twenty twenty three crazy? October. And she'll be like, yeah, I thought I saw him though. <laughs> he says they're on a break, and I'm like, you know what? Whatever helps you sleep at night, Bucko. Bucko, you never want to get the Bucko. No, when when guys t- when my guy friends divulge something they've done bad in a relationship, I just don't even know how to react because I'm like, obviously I'm a girl. I don't want to hear that. But at the same time, I'm like, it, it, it kind of like gives me some, like uh, some warning. Like I, I take heed of that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go about my life thinking this of men and that the God having guy friends ruins your perspective on no, it like guys. No, it yeah, doesn't. it does. No, it doesn't. Being around guys so much is that I think the reason why I act, why I talk like the way I do on this podcast. Okay. But that's your honest. fault. No, that's your fault. No, 100%. guys are way too comfortable. With locker room talk in front of me. <laughs> well, take that as a compliment. That they're willing to talk that certain way because of how FTB you are. Being a bro will have your heart broken and you'll never want to date a bro. Being a bro will have your heart broken. Yeah. That's a bar. Because then you hear how men are. It's sad. Don't ever be friends with guys, actually. Just be friends with girls and be delusional. I have your phone still. Yeah, it's making me nervous. It's making me uncomfortable. You got a lot of texts. First long episode in the books. How do we feel? I feel a little. I feel a little bit of anxiety about it. But yeah, like, I we'll, feel good. we'll we'll get better at it. We'll get we'll better, get better at, it. at it. We'll we'll, we'll kind of learn how to make it uh, flow a little more smoother. But you know, obviously, we gotta we we teeter on the line of too much detail with too yeah, little. detail. We'll figure out the line. We'll, we'll straddle we'll find, the line. We'll find the boundary. All right. Yeah. Back next week. Woo!